I am back from the NASCAR Chicago Street Race weekend. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. So last week I said I was headed to Chicago for the street race weekend and I have just come back from the Windy City and I'm here to report that it was one of the best events I've ever been to in my life. I know uh, last week I trashed the city of Chicago. I trashed your sports team. I trashed your cuisine. I trashed everything about it because I didn't like that guy from the suburbs talking uh, a lot of nonsense about a sport that he knew nothing about. So I trashed Chicago dogs last week. I'm here to say that I'm a believer in the Chicago dog now. I don't necessarily need that on every hot dog I ever have, but I did have four of them <laughs> this weekend and I enjoyed all of them. I had two at the racetrack and then two from other places uh, around the city. Enjoyed every second of one of those hot dogs. Uh, I don't really need that many onions, but beggars can't be choosers. I enjoyed everything about it. The city. I said, oh, you know, I don't go to Chicago talking about the amount of firearm violence you're going to have this and that. First off, didn't encounter any of that. Did happen. I saw it on the news. I watched the news from time to time. Um, that's unfortunate. That sucks for everybody that was involved in that. But people constantly talk about how great Chicago is in the summertime. And honestly, they're 100% right. I would go back to Chicago even without the NASCAR street race. Now, I've only ever been to Chicago in the wintertime before this. And I was like, this city's not that great. It's not the best uh, place I've ever been. So I am happy to report that Chicago is, in fact, a lovely city to spend time in, to walk around. I walked 40-ish miles over the course of this weekend, and it was absolutely worth it every single time. So full disclosure, I was there this weekend because the brake car logo was on the number six Xfinity car. And you're like, I didn't see the six car in the Xfinity race. Correct, because it did not qualify, but that's racing. We had Thomas and Uziata in the car um, driving for JD Motorsports. He drove that Jeff Gordon throwback at... Uh, the arc race at mid-Ohio earlier this year. Didn't qualify, unfortunate, but that's racing. I completely understand it. Uh, the four car with Ty Dillon also did not qualify. So for the first time since 2007, JD Motorsports did not have a car in the Xfinity Series, which is a bummer. But again, it's racing. Mechanical failures happen. Mistakes happen. Um, that's racing. Chalk it up to that. Still very cool to see uh, the brake car logo on a race car, though. Uh, felt like a kid on Christmas when I saw it. It was very cool to kind of see how far this channel has gone in that time period. But the race in general, well, the whole event in general. First off, we were there on passes, so I didn't have to buy my ticket. But I would absolutely spend the money to buy a ticket to this event. That's how much I enjoyed it. That's how much I think you get your money's worth out of it. Having the hotels right there next to the racetrack. We stayed on Michigan Avenue. Again, full disclosure, we spent $200, $220 a night at the La Meridian. Uh, lovely room, king size bed, all the things that come along with that. Able to walk right out the door up the ra up uh, Michigan Avenue into the racetrack every single day. And it was 100% worth it. My total bill for the weekend was still cheaper than probably one night for most of the hotels around Bristol Motor Speedway, or at least substantially cheaper than anything that would cost for a three-day weekend uh, around Bristol or other racetracks, you know, like that on the calendar. So if you're going to complain about, you know, the price at Bristol, maybe check this out. Because while it's not Bristol, it's still a super unique event. They had a great fan zone right when you would walk in on the north side of the racetrack. Uh, local vendors set up in the middle, food, concessions, uh, you know, merch tents over to the side, and then other activations that were just happening around that entire field. Then you would go into, you know, the gates, tap your wristband, show your, you know, VIP passes, whatever. That opened up into this big NASCAR Chicago logo right here, which everybody took a picture in front of, including me and Eric Estep. Ran into him this weekend. Could not have been a nicer guy. I'm 6'5". Eric made me feel short. So he's got to be like 6'7", 6 6'8", 6 uh, somewhere in that range uh, there. Super nice guy. Um, enjoyed talking with him. You go past that. You had the big fountain set up, uh, which everybody was taking pictures in front of. We took pictures in front of it. They had merch off to the side there. They had uh, driver merch. Didn't have the haulers this week, but they, each driver had a tent set up, and you would just walk up and point at what you wanted, much like a merch hauler. Um, for, hey, if you want to sell a lot of merch at an event, have it rain, because there was an absolute rush it was like black friday people were trying to get merch because everybody got soaking wet i ran back to, on sunday ran back to my hotel to change out of my soaking wet clothes grab my rain jacket came back to the racetrack put dry shoes on those immediately got wet as soon as i stepped out of the hotel that was stupid should have just put the wet shoes back on um got back to the racetrack got a poncho <laughs> given to me uh you know put that on tried to stay a little bit more dry doubled up on it that sucked. But they also had a big merch tent set up for the Chicago Street Race and NASCAR merch. Cool experience there. 
uh, bought this t-shirt so you know that I went to Chicago race. I think we bought another t-shirt, a hoodie, and a hat and ponchos as well. I think that's all we bought in that tent. But on our way out after buying a hat, my girlfriend got her face burnt from the sun. As we're walking out, this older man holds open the door for us. And I said, hey, thanks. Like, thanks for holding the door open. Uh, I spun around because it was Jim France. He had opened the door for us and I walked up to him. I spun around and said, hey, are you Jim France? And he said, yeah, I am. And we had a lovely conversation for a few moments. Um, talked about the event, uh, NASCAR, you know, his role, just kind of had a nice casual conversation for a few moments. And I think he was maybe taken aback by the fact that I recognized him, but he could not have been nicer. So we had a nice moment with him. Uh, you know, I told him that we're having a great time at the event. He's, you know, told us that he hopes we have a great time and uh you know enjoy our time there which was again above and beyond he didn't have to stop and talk to us but it was nice to have that uh connection i think nobody else really even appeared to know who he was which was is always kind of funny to me when the stuff like that happens but they had a great uh activation set up in that area as well there's mcdonald's there's jose cuervo liquid iv was there hell of a good dips uh abb was there showing off the new nascar ev prototype you had toyota chevy activations as well and then on the far south end of the property there uh in the park you had your festival set up we walked from victory lane with shane van gisbergen on saturday up over the pedestrian bridge off of pit road and over another pedestrian bridge into the Black Keys concert. One of the coolest things you could do at a racetrack. Went right into Chain Smokers. Didn't say for the Chain Smokers. Had a dinner reservation up in the city, so we had to go to that instead. Um, probably should have stayed for Chain Smokers, but ah, eh, whatever. Their music's not really my type. I feel like I've aged out of of that, but it looked like everybody had a great time, and seeing the driver introductions was pretty cool uh, as well. Saturday, we spent most of the day on pit road with the Xfinity series. Uh, shout out to the 98 team, uh, specifically their tire guy, super nice, uh, really enjoyed talking to him, gave me a lot of great insight on sort of how the event was laid out compared to last year and, and everything that was going into, into that. Shane Van Gisberg and Kyle Larson put on an absolute clinic for the field. Super clean racing, super competitive, really, really fun to watch. You don't typically see stuff like that happen very often. We're in the moment. You're like, this is the best that this can get right now. So enjoyed all of that. Saturday, walked up um, before the race started during the uh, Xfinity Series practice and qualifying session. You know, there are the spots that maybe do not enter, but, uh, you know, I entered because it was the exit of turn six right there at the end of pit road and getting the cars going by right there, literally standing half a foot away, literally standing like two feet from the wall was one of the coolest experiences as those cars are just flying full throttle out of the corner up and over the bridge can't can't beat it cannot beat it at all uh in terms of viewing from the racetrack i watched a lot of the race from pit road i did wander around a bit especially on the uh i guess technically the north side of the racetrack the turn eight nine and ten area that columbus circle area really enjoyed watching in that section right there seeing the cars move coming through turn eight around the corner in nine and then out of ten uh just watching the bit of roll that they had and just where the grip was coming from was really really cool i was nerding out over that a little bit turn seven as well uh coming down the bridge into turn seven was another great spot to uh watch from i think the only place i didn't really watch any part of the race from would be like the turn four area at the far end the south end of the racetrack uh past like the festival field and the ga plus area down there didn't make it down there but uh everywhere else had a really really good time watching that i will say i i know people watch these videos right TikTok, youtube i know people watch we have followers i have followers i interact with a lot of people the amount of people that said hello this weekend was super humbling very nice much appreciated um i enjoyed seeing and saying hi to every single person that i met um got asked to take pictures this weekend as well something that's never happened to me before and uh, i promise i will get less awkward about it going forward there is a picture out there if the kid posts it of me and him my girlfriend ran to the bathroom real quick i was holding her purse on my shoulder because you know why not and he has to take a picture i took a picture with him as i'm holding the purse so if you see the purse that's why it happened there but yeah it was great to see everybody um everybody that came up and said hi are you break hard this and that much appreciated enjoyed it even walking to dinner every night <laughs> i had multiple people say hello 
Um, the first night I wasn't wearing anything that said break hard on it and got recognized. And that's when I was like, oh, okay. So people do actually watch. Um, so yeah, hopefully, uh, I enjoyed talking to everyone. Like I said, uh, hopefully nobody thinks I blew them off. If I didn't hear you, my apologies. Um, also, if you saw me on the street and it looked like we were in a rush, that's because we probably were trying to make a dinner reservation. <laughs> so apologies if I didn't stop and talk uh, long enough there. But uh, again, like I said, I, I appreciate everybody uh, saying hello. It it actually does mean a lot. So moving on from the sappy topics here, uh, the cup race on Sunday. Get to the racetrack. Uh, also, Keith Urban has a ton of hits that I was just not aware of. So who knew? bangers on bangers for for him walked through the garage area uh hung out there for a little bit and then walked down the grid pre-race checked everything out uh somehow ended up in the part of my take instagram story walking by as they were recording it big cat shorter than i thought or i'm taller than i realized either way cool to see you know them be on the grid and, and have a presence there that was always exciting to see steve phelps was walking up and down pit road uh talking to all the drivers which was uh, cool. I think that's a nice little added thing that most people probably don't see week in and week out. I've seen him do it at every race I think I've been to when I've been on the grid. So, um, yeah, enjoy seeing that. The race, obviously, right as the race started, it started to rain. The protesters aren't the reason the race got delayed. The rain's the reason the race got delayed because it absolutely downpoured. Unfortunate, but it happens. And then it downpoured again. At one point, I was standing underneath a tree, and uh, it rained so hard that it just did not matter. That's why I had to run back and change. And then, you know, the race goes 58 laps out of the 75. Unfortunate, didn't make it all the way to the end. I still had a great time watching the race and uh, seeing the strategy, how it would play out. Would the slick tires prevail there at the end? Would the dry or the wet tires uh, be able to hold him off? And obviously, Bowman held him off. Blake Harris with a big balls call to leave him out. Reddick probably catches him, maybe, if he doesn't hit the wall up there and i think turn four is where that happened at so yeah uh, another miss for tyler reddick but for bowman it's a much much needed win the haters can finally uh you know as he said cheers to them because he got back to victory lane when everybody was down him saying he needs to get out of hendrick they need to replace him with somebody this and that alex bowman's not going anywhere right now hendrick now has all four cars into the playoffs really cool for for that team uh if you would have told anybody five years ago shane van gisbergen and joey hand would win the first two stages at a race on the streets of chicago they probably would have laughed in your face but that's exactly what happened on sunday one of those obscure things that occurred there todd gillen had a really good run going early on in that or not early on but through that race as well uh, a lot of good like battles happening ricky stenhouse jr looked terrible at the beginning of the race gets a p6 finish there at the end and then of course you have the bubble walls controversy at the end banging doors with uh alex bowen on the cooldown lap chase elliott does the same thing essentially and then break checks daniel suarez for some reason he's getting a pass whatever i put a video about it I'm not going to get into it here uh people are also asking about the rain or not the rain the darkness level yes it was definitely dark down there i watched towards the end of that race down in turn eight and uh on michigan avenue right there and i see a lot of people being like we saw an hour of daylight when they called it yeah you do the problem is there's a lot of tall buildings along michigan avenue right there plus those are tree-lined streets with pretty mature trees it was really dark through there i mean the pace car coming through with its headlights on was insanely noticeable and then you saw a cup car go through without headlights and you're like oh wow it is dark out here right now the streets lights were on and they were illuminating the area around where we were standing it was definitely dark and you can see pit road right here um as we were going up and out it was it was dark so i'm not mad that they called the race overall i had a great time love the experience top to bottom nothing bad to say about it the only logistic thing that i would possibly change is like where the haulers are located versus where pit road is there's obviously not a great place to put them but having all the people try to leave the racetrack as the teams are trying to push all their stuff back just wasn't working it was a battle happening right there and neither side wanted to give in uh so yeah that's the only thing i would change but other than that really really excited i will absolutely be back next weekend whether i next year not next weekend but next year whether i have to buy tickets go on passes i don't really care it was such a fun event i will absolutely be back so if you went let me know in the comments if you want to go absolutely give it a try sometime like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break hard instagram and twitter at break hard blog